In this video I'm going to show you around the Altena 54NG. This elegant boat has a tough exterior. She was built in 2023 and has a 6mm thick steel multi-chine hull. She was built in the Netherlands by Altena Yachting according to a design by Trim Design. The vessel has a displacement of 40 tonnes and her steel hull along with her steel superstructure means that she has been built to do some serious cruising. By the way, if you are looking to charter a boat, then make sure you get in contact with me using the link pinned in the comments. At the time of making this video, the boat is currently listed for sale. Make sure you stay tuned because I will share more information towards the end of the video. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a drink or two and join me as I show you around this boat. Welcome on board. I'm really looking forward to showing you around this unique boat. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also if you've got a boat you'd like me to feature on my channel, feel free to get in contact with me. You'll find all my contact details in the video description and I'll pin a link to my micro site in the comments as well. So welcome aboard this Altina 54 NG. Uh, the NG actually stands for next generation. I'm going to start this boat tour on the swim deck. As you can see, a sizable space here and we can get access onto the cockpit via the starboard walkway and there's another one over here on the port side as well. Let's head up into the cockpit now. One of the things that I love about this boat is the overhang here because if you are lucky enough to be in an area where you've got lots of sunshine, unlike today, then you can actually seek a bit of refuge thanks to that overhang. But also, when the sun starts to sort of dip in the sky a little bit, you can open up that. And as you can see, it exposes this area here to lots of sunlight, which I really love. I also love this seating over here uh, on the uh, transom part of the cockpit. And of course, we've got a table there as well. So you can sit out here and enjoy some food with your favourite people. I'll take you down into the engine bay a little bit later on. This boat is actually powered by a twin John Deere 250 horsepower engines, 184 kilowatts each. In terms of her dimensions, she has a length of 16.91 metres, a beam of 4.76 metres and a draft of 1.15 metres. She's got a steel hull and she was built in 2023. As we come up here onto the bow, one of the standout features in this particular area is this foremast, which I really like. Obviously, typically we tend to find a mast on the coach roof, but up here, look, it's completely flat. So if you wanted to, I guess you could put some solar panels up there. But yeah, I really like the position and the style of this foremast. Um, you could put a radar up there as well if you wanted to. Moving forward, as you can see, we've got the sun pads here just in front of the wheelhouse and look at the size of that pane of glass. As we'll see in a minute when we go inside, it means you get some really, really fantastic views out there. When it comes to how this boat handles, not only is the vessel powered by two engines, but she also has a hydraulic side power bow and stern thruster as well. She also has an air draft of 5.14 meters, but of course the foremast can be lowered with just the touch of a button to bring that air draft down, ideal for inland cruising. Let's head back towards the cockpit using the port side deck. 
as you can see we've got an access gate down here and there is another one over there on the starboard side as well uh, but these side decks are really wide lots of space to walk down here without having to pivot and turn around too much and if i just pan around again i'll show you the size look at the size of that window that goes into the saloon it's absolutely huge the steel deck is finished with synthetic teak and the glass windows are set in steel frames the large doors to the cockpit from the saloon open seamlessly to integrate the two areas. As you walk into the saloon area, as you can see over here on the starboard side, have an L-shaped galley. You've got your induction hob there and your cooker as well. And over here, we have a sink. So you can stand here preparing your food, preparing your meal, while still engaging with all your guests on board. And I really do like this open plan kind of living aspect of this boat. Uh, of course it's all over one level as well as you can see over here on the port side got some more storage space and as you can see i've got my camera gear up there we've just had the drone up got some really fantastic shots uh, of this boat underway which you probably would have seen already by now in this stage of the video but here we have a fridge over there open up this got some more cold storage as well Moving forward, and you can see over on the port side, got an L-shaped seating area with another table. Again, a fantastic place to sit down and relax and take in the view. And if I just pan over to the starboard side, again, the size of that window really is a centerpiece of this area. Over here, we have a pop-up TV recessed into the cabinetry. And when this is all lit up at night, it looks absolutely spectacular. As you would expect with a new boat, the helm has been kitted out with all of the latest marine technology and we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. But what do you think of the huge windows and the way this boat enables those on board to be able to connect to the seascape around the vessel? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. In terms of the navigation suite on board, we've got the Yacht Control Electric Compass, two Yacht Control Multi control displays as well uh, we've also obviously got the VHF depth sounder uh, and the Simrad uh, radios there as well another standout feature on this boat is the fact that she does have spud poles as well if you subscribe to my channel you probably would have heard me mentioning spud poles before in an earlier video but she's got one in the bow and one in the stern and there's the controls over there on the right hand side that are used to deploy and retract them but as you can see, everything is where you need it. You've got the throttle control levers over there on the right hand side. And of course, got a bow and stern thruster controls as well. But one of the things that I have to point out at this stage is that view. Again, we're really seeing the benefits of all that glass. You can see as we pan around, you get a fantastic all round view, which makes controlling and operating this boat on your own a lot lot easier because you can just see pretty much all sectors around the boat if you do need to hop out onto the starboard side deck you've got the access door over there on the starboard side and again we've got another one over there on the port side and up here as well got another large skylight that if you do want a bit of shade that can be closed as well it's got an automatic open and closure feature so you don't have to do it manually it is done electronically right let me take you down into the accommodation head down this staircase here as well as a 3500 liter fuel tank there is also a 2000 liter fresh water tank and a 1000 liter black water tank so in terms of accommodation the boat has a total of two cabins with four berths the interior is finished in mahogany we we'll call this the forward vip cabin as you can see, there is loads of space in here, lots of headroom as well. If I pan up and show you, you've got the skylight up there, which can be shut or open for some additional ventilation. I love the fact as well that when you're going to be on this boat, relaxing, laying down, enjoying your time on board, you've got some speakers up there on the bulkhead as well. So you can really enjoy some fantastic sound system down here. I also like the fact that this bed is in an elevated position as you can see you've got two steps that leads up onto the bed and over here on the pool side got some hanging locker space there plenty of room for all of your stuff pool hole over there and another one over there on the starboard side as well 
Also, you can see here we've got the controls for the interior climate. So you can set the temperature in this cabin according to your own preferences. If I spin around now and face aft, I'm able to take you into the ensuite. And you can see you've got a heated tower out there, got a nice decent sized shower as well. You can actually step down into this shower, so it makes maximum use of the headroom in here. And if I pivot round, show you we've got that sink here, it was standard salute for the mirror, and some more storage space under there. And this door can slide across so you can shut yourself in here and shower away until your heart's content without disturbing the people who you're going to be sharing the cabin with. Right, so we're going to come out now, pivot around 180 degrees, take a step down, and look in here, we've got some more cold storage as well. And behind this door, we have some more storage space. Right, let's head aft into the master cabin. Straight away, as you can see, another two portholes over here. So you're getting plenty of light into this area and more storage in there. I won't open up all of these, but look, you get the idea. I'll open that one up and look as we head aft. Again, I've always been a massive fan of indirect lighting because I think it really does set the scene on board. Uh, and as you can see, this area is lit beautifully. Over here on the port side, more hanging locker space. More space than I would ever need, that's for sure. I always travel light. And look, over here, we've got a little office area, really. That'd be a perfect place to set up your laptop. Because look, you've got the two power points over there. You can plug your stuff in and spread out nicely. You probably even get a Mac on there. Again, more cabinetry over here on the port side. And also this master cabin does have speakers set onto the bulkhead as well. I would love to hear what the sound system is like down here. I bet it's absolutely spectacular. Moving over here onto the starboard side now, the master cabin. As you can see, you've got a seating area. So you can get up in the morning, have a coffee, sit down, plan your day's events whilst enjoying some great music and taking in the ambiance as well. We look over here, got another socket over here you can plug your stuff into and look more digital control panels as well. Open this up, yeah, you fit plenty of stuff in there. Right, let's spin around and I'll take you into the ensuite. You can see obviously we've got the toilet there. Over here we've got another decent sized sink. Uh, lots of space on here again to put all of your stuff. And look, we've got another window here, open that up, there you go, and look you could open up these for some additional ventilation in here as well. Another heated towel right on that bulkhead, and look, a decent sized shower. You could definitely fit two, maybe three people in there quite easily. And yeah, we've got lots of headroom in here as well. If I just bend down now, look, I'll show you the indirect lighting all around that bed. I would love to come back here at night actually and see what this all looks like lit up. I bet it's absolutely beautiful. Let's come back through here. I'll take you back into the corridor and we shall go back upstairs. As you can tell, the boat was underway whilst I was filming, but it was not long before we headed back into De Vaux Marina, which gave me the chance to have a nosy around the engine bay. So we've come back into De Vaux's massive boathouse now, so I can take you down into the engine room. And I must admit, when I first saw the hatch on the deck that leads down into where the engines are, I thought we'd be looking at an engine bay, but I was wrong. This is a proper engine room. Come with me, let's take a look. 
As mentioned at the beginning of the video, the boat is powered by twin John Deere 250 horsepower engines, which produce 184 kilowatts of power. The engines only have 22 hours on them, and they are cooled thanks to a fresh water heat exchanger system. The exhaust is also water cooled and the straight stainless steel shafts are water lubricated. As you can see, there is lots of room down here and I would definitely say that this is more of an engine room as opposed to an engine bay, which is pretty impressive for a boat that has an LOA of just under 17 meters. The boat is heated by a diesel ducted hot air Cabola KN20 system. And when you are in the warmer climates, the reverse cycle air conditioning makes sure that you are kept nice and cool. For safety, the boat is of course equipped with an electric bilge pump and bilge alarms to monitor any water ingress. Powering the boat's systems is a reliable Onan Marine 9.5 kW generator. The electrical systems feature an Optima Red Start battery for quick engine starts and three Mastervolt service batteries to power onboard systems like the lights and electronics. There are also two Mastervolt Pro 24 volt 3500 watt battery chargers to efficiently replenish the batteries from shore power or the generator. Two Mastervolt 24V inverters convert the battery power into household AC current, allowing you to use the standard appliances and devices even when you're away from the dock. And while the boat doesn't have any stabilizers at the moment, the necessary preparations for their installation have already been made. But what do you think of this engine room? Share your thoughts in the comments below. So thanks for watching. I'd like to say a massive thank you to DeVault Yacht Brokers for inviting me on board to show you this very special boat. I'm really interested to hear what you think of this boat. So make sure you leave some comments down below. If you are interested in finding out more, this vessel is currently listed for sale. I'll leave all of the details on my microsite and you can find my microsite by clicking on the link in the comments or the link in the video description. Thanks for watching. Let's see if we can get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. I've recently launched a new blog and you can sign up for it for free by heading to the link pinned in the comments or by using the link in the video description. I would like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for helping to support my YouTube channel by becoming a member. If you are interested in channel membership, then you'll find the join button on my main YouTube channel.